So I'd like to welcome up uh, Shimron Tremel. And, and so Shimmy's been practicing DevOps. He's been a practitioner for over the last 10 years. Um, he's got a background in release automation and operations and sysadmin. And now he's taking on the, the daunting task, but exciting task, of building on an SRE team. And he's going to share with you about using monitoring to improve and speed up your DevOps journey. So give it up for Shimron. Thank you, sir. We're going to see if we see if this... Oh, there we go. All right, so first off, I wanted to thank the organizers. I know a few of the guys, uh, Keith, uh, James. Um, this is pretty huge. Like, I don't think I've ever seen St. Pete, Tampa have this kind of turnout for a more ops collaboration type conference ever since I've been here. And I've been here for about five years now. So, my name is Shimron. Uh, I've been doing some form of operations, technology, help desk, sysadmin for the last 10, 15 years. Uh, originally, originally from Michigan, American Express and the Surf platform recruited me to come down here to Florida. Uh, stayed with them for about two years, went over to Express Scripts, went to Jable then got recruited back to serve to once income purchased us. So now I'm a member of the income platform, which is a prepaid card program. So you're gonna see this a ton today. Like everybody's slide prob or everybody's slide deck probably has this. But we're gonna go with what is DevOps? There's going to be a thousand answers around this, and everybody's going to have a different sort of ex explanation on what it is. Like, I've been recruited for, oh, hey, come be on this DevOps team. Come be our DevOps engineer. Um, very first question I ask is, okay, well, how do you define DevOps? Some are going to tell me, oh, hey, I want you to do my release management, or I want you to do all of my automation. Those are kind of the roles where I'm like, all right, this is kind of a shaky situation. Do you guys actually know what's going on here? So I tend to go with the Jez Humble definition of it's not a goal. It's a never-ending process of continual improvement. Or essentially, let's break down some silos, let's get together, and let's figure out how to, ac how to accomplish what the goals of the business are. So as I say that, and I, we've got all those, we had all those different definitions of DevOps behind me there. How, how do we speed up all of those, or what can we use to speed up all of those? Legit metrics monitoring can speed up every single defini definition of DevOps. Whether you're talking about release engineering, whether you're talking about system automation, or just saying, hey, I want to go from this area of heavy silos to making all of our teams work closer together. Metrics and monitoring can get us to that space. So this dude doing some traditional monitoring, looking at just big boards, doesn't really know what he's looking at. Traditional monitoring tends, tends to have a focus on tooling. So whether you're talking about, we use Nagios, we use Splunk. Our team over here uses New Relic. We've actually just spun up a Prometheus instance for ourselves. The people that actually use our more traditional monitoring type things, they're your network operations teams, uh, your sysadmins, maybe your developers look at it, maybe some of the business people look at some of the fringe elements of it, but everybody's not really looking at it and getting involved. Still very siloed and still very, this is my tool, this is my data, you can't use it. Also, what are you actually monitoring? 
do the things that you're monitoring actually make sense? Are you monitoring like things the business care about or do you just monitor, hey, I need to know how many hits my IS server gets. That's all I care about. Business doesn't care about this at all, but this is what I care about. So does it really matter that you're monitoring it? So what actually works with traditional monitoring? Maybe you've got some alerting set up around it. Maybe you've got some automation like, oh, hey, when this thing happens on my Nagios, another system kicks off and does something weird. It's good for, hopefully it's good for troubleshooting sometimes, but not always. It's always one of those, it's told me too late what's going on or am I actually monitoring the things that I need to monitor to actually resolve the issue in a somewhat quick manner. So we all want to go faster. We all want to get to this faster version of DevOps. I want to be what uh, Andrew mentioned earlier. I want to be that third stage. How do you actually get there? What does that actually entail? There's a lot of stuff going around it, but like Andrew said, and like pretty much everyone has said so far, kind of your base layer of that is actually doing better monitoring. I'm glad Andrew mentioned it earlier. I was a big fan of the Google SRE book and that actually changed how I think about monitoring completely. So very first thing I did after we after I read that book, then I gave it to my entire team to read was Hey guys, what are our SLOs? SLOs for folks that don't know, service level objectives very different than SLAs, SLAs being something that's legal and binding and this is what my customer expects. SLOs are what are we actually measuring and what is the target for that service that we need to get to. We've got a couple of uh, applications internally. Uh, about 250 some odd applications. And there's one, only one of our flows actually has a full on SLO for the entire thing. We know transaction comes in, takes eight seconds to process, and then it's gotta be back out the door. Now we've got a singular SLO. Next step, and we've got one SLO, we need to map out the rest. But what are my SLIs? SLIs being your service level indicators or how you actually measure this, what stuff do you actually need to measure to get to that SLO. So for us, it's a matter of, I have to know how long it takes for that transaction to go from our gateway to our authentication, to our card processing, through a couple of other steps. How long does auth need to take to get to the database? How long does that database query need to take? I can measure all of those things. I can put those all on a very nice dashboard, give it to my leadership and say, hey, this is how long our stuff needs to take. Our developers all know this and they can say, oh, I need to speed up how long my auth call takes. Our database engineers know this is what our requirement is and they can say, oh, we need to speed up this query. Storage guys, everybody knows and everybody's behind the same, the same SLO. Another big one was, what's our mean time to, detec to detection? The thing with the mean time to detection or MTTD is, sure, you know when something's broken, but how quickly do you know it's broken? I've got a boss that likes to look at metrics, actually, my current boss does it. The boss that brought me down here likes to look at metrics. Real kind of annoying when your boss comes up and tells you, oh, hey, something's broken. You should probably go look at it. If your boss ever t has to tell you what's broken, you messed up because that's never a good thing. So knowing when stuff breaks and actually knowing it before your boss my boss needs to know it before the CTO. CTO should know it before users start calling in. 
that's kind of the chain of way it goes. So how do we measure that time and how do we, once we start measuring that time, let's work on starting to shrink it. And what's my mean time to resolution? How long does it take me to actually fix the problem once I've found the problem? So even if it takes an hour, now we've got something that we can say, oh, took me an hour to fix this outage. Let's get it down to 50 minutes. Let's get it down to 20 minutes. Okay, now let's automate this thing. So now that we know it's happening, let's go ahead and automatically fix it. But you can't fix it and you don't really know how long it takes you until you start measuring it. So how do these things actually help speed up DevOps? It's kind of, it's like once you kind of look at all the definitions of these things and you actually start monitoring these things, you kind of start to realize it's like, oh, once I've got an SLO, I can actually take this information and now everybody across my organization knows what to actually look at. We're all marching towards the same direction. The tricky part is, how do we start gathering this new information? Is it gonna be our current tool set? Is it going to be some new tool? Really doesn't matter. The important thing is that you start gathering it and maybe it's something that you don't even report on right now. So you've got to figure out, how do I get this information? How do I actually store it? And then how do I actually share it out? Another thing for, for us specifically, since we're in the financial sector, we've got to follow PCI, we've got to follow all these different things. For some odd reason, we've got to follow HIPAA, I don't know. But how long do we need to keep it? So that's another piece of it that goes into it. So back to how this is helping, how it's helping speed up. We've got to get everybody access to this data. The important thing is that I want my leadership to basically look at the same metrics I look at. I want the people on my team to be looking at stuff the devs look at. I want the devs looking at stuff that the operations people look at. I want my first level support people looking at everything because they're, everybody's eyes are a little bit different. Everybody's mind thinks a little bit differently. And the more diverse set of eyes you can get onto these problems, maybe somebody comes up with a better solution than what I could come up with. Maybe a dev fixes a CPU problem that I've been seeing. Maybe one of my engineers sees like, oh hey, we're getting a memory leak on this application every time this happens. I can write some tooling to fix that, or even better yet, I can get into the code. One person looking at it might never notice it, and they might always be like, oh, this is just how this application works. So the more eyes we can get on it to it, the better. And then hopefully, everybody actually starts getting excited about this sort of data. When you start putting dashboards together and everybody starts seeing we're all going after the same sort of goal. We're all looking to, for our state. We all know we need to hit this eight seconds. How do my things help with this eight second turnaround? How, do, how does what I do help this? Business can now look into it and say, oh, we know we're hitting this on 99%. That's awesome. How do we get to 99.5%? Whatever your, whatever your timings are. So, how do you keep improving this sort of thing though? It's like, we always want to iterate as developers, as engineers, as ops people. We're always trying to think of ways. How do we make our solutions better? Continue to iterate these sorts of things. Make better use of the metrics you're grabbing. Spread it out. Make your entire monitoring solution high availability. Um, automate things to shrink that MTTR. So for this one, I always like to tell the story. We've got, a, we've got this solution that takes 12 gateways. 
we decided we're going to put these 12 different gateways on 12 different servers. All 12 servers can actually run all 12 gateways, but we've only got one gateway running at a time. Any moment, one of those servers could fall over. So currently, someone has to hop on, run that gateway on a different server. That's a problem. It's not autom automated, and, but the gateways can only run at one place at one time. Next version of this thing, let's go ahead, create a watchdog, monitor all these 12, and have that decide where this next pool is going to run. Those are the types of things that we can use to shrink MTTR for our organization. And that takes us from, if a gateway goes down, an hour of downtime, because our ITOC has to call us, we have to wake up at 2 o'clock in the morning, get onto the laptop, remember our password, get to the VPN, actually log into the server, start the service, versus the machine automatically doing its job and saying, oh, I'm down over here, I'm going to start up over here. Next way to, next thing you really want to start doing, even though this should be first, is give everyone access to the tools. I had a talk with one of our monitoring guys the other day, and he specifically told me, oh yeah, no, we don't, we don't give everybody access to the Windows logs in Splunk. And I'm like, why not? Oh, that's just data they don't need to see. I'm like, there's no PII in there. Why are, why are you blocking it? Oh, they wouldn't know what they're looking at. <laughs> I don't think I've ever been that visibly angry at someone. It's like, give everybody the data. There's no PII information in there. They can see it. More eyes looking at more of the data means hopefully we figure out patterns, we figure out problems, we get more people working on solutions faster than just you looking at the data or me looking at the data. And finally, let's get some of that business data into our metrics or into our monitoring solutions. I've got this dream of, I've been close a couple of times, but I tend to be a bit of a job hopper, so haven't been able to fully implement it yet, but getting that full pane of glass, I want to basically have this sort of dashboard where, I like Grafana, so I'm going to use Grafana. You've got your business metrics at the top level, monitoring is, or uh, marketing is doing this this month. These, this new campaign is going to run across these applications. These applications run on these virtual machines in VMware. Virtual machines run across these uh, ESXi hosts. Hits this database, hits this storage, hits this hardware, hits these networks, hits these F5s, hits these uh, firewalls. Having all of that information together in one place so you can totally get that full-on view of this is what our business is from an IT perspective. Putting that in front of your CTO, putting that in front of your CEO, putting that in front of your engineers, your developers, that sort of stuff is really powerful so, they, so everybody can see how what they do affects the overall bottom line, and now we're more likely to increase conversation, bring, come together, storage people talking to the hardware folks, hardware folks talking to developers, operations people talking to leadership. That's the direction. That was the sort of goal of DevOps, is to bring everybody together in that sort of one cohesive we're one big IT group, we're not ops people, we're not storage people, we're not developers, we're IT. And that is my talk, so uh, if you have any questions or anything, you know, feel free to reach out. I've got, uh, I'll be hanging out all day today, so you can also find me on Twitter at, at Shimron, because I was kind of early on the Twitter bandwagon, so I got my name. So. Thank you very much.